Good morning, Retro. My name is Nate. I'm Ryan. And today we are going to be talking about platformers that you overlooked. Wake up! Platforming games, we all know them, we all love them. Mario's, the Donkey Kong Countries, they're fantastic, but there's a lot of games out there that get overlooked. So Nate and I decided we would talk about a few that we felt um, just don't get enough love. Why don't you love me? Why don't you love me? Why don't you love me? Why don't you Couple parameters. No guns. No Mario. Obviously. Um, basically, 2D side scrollers only. We know there's a big world of 3D platformers out there. So many. But that's not what we're talking about. Yep. And we've come up with three games each from our collections that we feel meet the criteria. Absolutely. Want to kick us off? Yeah, absolutely. So, one of the first games that not a lot of people talk about, Sega Genesis. There was a ton of platforming games, mainly Sonic got a lot of attention, and this is a game that didn't hit a lot of collections. One, I think label art has a lot to do with it. That can be a big factor. And that is Asterix okay. on the Sega Genesis. So this is based off of an old French comic, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, and uh, it's a pretty basic platformer but it it is pretty fun it, yeah. it isn't um, it, there isn't a lot of depth to it there really isn't any weapons you're just hopping around platform platform to get where you need to go uh, but this is one that I'm pretty sure no one really talks about yeah and I feel like that's a property that's much bigger overseas like you said it is a foreign strip obviously it was in papers here yep. but it never caught on like it did over there right I'm sure you know our UK friends would be like we play that all the time. Yeah, That's way better. 50 so. copies, right? Yeah, absolutely. So this was kind of the first one that I was thinking of uh, in my collection. So what do you got? That's a good pick. Well, I'm going to go with the Sega Genesis 2. Um, this is a game that is maybe a little more well-known, mm -hmm. but it just gets dumped on. And you all understand why in a minute. That is Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron. The first Toe Jam and Earl gets a ton of praise for the randomization, the level structure, the sort of scavenger hunt. And this one flipped it on its head and turned it into a 2D side-scrolling platformer. Um, there is a little bit of mystery and like puzzle solving yep. with meeting some of the, the aliens and the humans along the way. But it's really a great game if you just separate yourself from the fact that it's not exactly like its predecessor. That doesn't make it any better or any worse. But I think if you give it a shot, I think if most people were honest with themselves and went back to it with an open mind... It's a great game. It's got a great I art own style. that game, and I haven't played it yet. I, <laughs> I've been I've fallen right into that sure. trap of like it's not that good. I'm gonna skip it. Yeah, and you know I, I wouldn't say it's the greatest platformer ever, but it's certainly worth your time. And one a lot of people missed. Yes, one that definitely doesn't get attention because of the other um, other game kind of in that series is Mickey. Mania yeah. on the Super Nintendo as well as the Sega Genesis. Yep. Uh, I, a lot of people look at Castle of Illusion as kind of that Mickey Mouse game. Right. But this is one that goes from like Steamboat Willie yeah, all the way. Section. Yeah. Steamboat Willie, black and white, and it goes all the way up to Prince and the Popper. So it goes from like the 19, what, I can't Five, remember. 40s? I yeah, know. 1940s to the 1990s. And so um, it is very platform. He does have kind of a weapon. He throws marbles at things. Yeah, I mean, that's just a toy. You can't count that, it's right? It's just a, it's a toy. It's not a weapon. No. So, um, yeah, this is one that I actually prefer over Castle of Illusion. This is just maybe more nostalgic to me. Well, I feel like this one moves a little faster. Castle of Illusion always felt kind of slow paced. Not that it's bad. Right. But the, the action, like you, in that one is so much better. That's a, it's a great pick. Absolutely. And What's it's your cheap? second one? It is very cheap. Spaceships, cars, balls, a helicopter, mushrooms, slides, floss, keyballs, race cars, robots, games, poops, a beer. You know, the works. They got the picture. Show this pizza. Lies an army of hidden forces introducing Mega Force. Low tech! Bold rocket launcher! Let's get this bird in the air! Backlash bummer! Come and attack! Scorpion! Return fire! Okay, Thorhammer, let's get these guys. Each sold separately. The Army of Hidden Forces. Mega Force from Kenner. Backlash comes with everything shown. You have to put it together. Other vehicles sold separately. Kool-Aid 
So my second one, a well-known franchise, again, an entry that isn't too loved. This is going to be Kirby's Epic Yarn. Nintendo uh, Wii. Yeah, it came out on the Wii. It's got a very cute aesthetic. Everything's drawn out of yarn. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people slept on it. Um, Kirby, okay. yeah, Kirby tends to get the made-for-kids sort of vibe anyway, which isn't necessarily untrue, but when you do the cutesy aesthetic on top of it, I think a lot of people just didn't get a chance, but it's got two-player co-op. The graphics are amazing. The way that you can transform into different shapes because he's made of yarn um, is fantastic. And let me just show you the best part of this. Look, when's the last time you bought a game that came with a manual oh my gosh. that was this beefy? That's an encyclopedia. It's almost worth it alone. And this is inexpensive. I think it got a port to the 3DS as well. But great game. And I think a lot of people skip out on games like this, especially on the Wii, because they've been duped so many times. Oh. And even on the NES, we've been duped where it's like, oh, there's a Yoshi game and it's a puzzle game. Right. And the Wii was notorious for throwing stuff out like, oh, it's Kirby's Yarn. Oh, well, it doesn't tell you that it's an actual platforming style of game. So you just right. kind of overlook that for sure. And this one definitely falls in that like later half of the Wii life cycle yep. where most, I would say, gamers um, kind of moved on from the console yep. and casual people definitely left by that point. Yep. This was in bargains bin every, bargain bins everywhere for like five bucks. Yep. I missed out on it, so... Yeah. Yeah. Here's an NES game. You know I'm an NES guy. It's my collection. Uh, that's what I focus on the most. And this is an NES game that doesn't get a lot of love. And that is MC Kids or McKids. McKids. That just sounds like a messed up like menu item when you call it McKids. Oh, big McKids. Want some, some dipping sauce going <laughs> with that, sir? So this is put out by Virgin Games. Uh, this was. Um, I wish it was a Happy Meal game, but it is yeah. very McDonald's focused. So uh, you run around and collect the golden arches. <clears throat> um, it's a little floaty uh, yes. controls, but I would say that they tried to rip off Mario as much as possible with just some of yes. the the movements and what you're picking up and throwing and all of those kind of things. And the overworld is very Super Mario Brothers 3. Yes. They really went for that. Yeah, absolutely. But this is one that not a lot of people look at. They skip it. Yep. And some of it just has to do with McDonald's. Right. right? You of think course. it's some uh, like edutainment game or yep. something that you just want to skip. So that was one that I never played as a kid, but when I started collecting, I was like, oh, I gotta have it. I don't, I don't own it. And I actually played it. It was, it's not bad. It, it is surprisingly fun. good. And that other virgin on the, the other virgin produced game on Genesis, Mickey and Mac, Global Gladiators yes. is also very good. That's so good. So those are two great McDonald's games. Give them a shot. Absolutely. All right, you got something, uh, something Last crazy one. going on here. This one's a little bigger. This is gonna be Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Nintendo GameCube. Nintendo GameCube uses the bongos that came for Donkey Konga to control um, Donkey Kong in a side-scrolling platforming game, sort of like Donkey Kong Country. Because um, Donkey Kong Country wasn't hard enough. Right, right. right. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, it did get a port to the Wii with the new Play Choice controls. I don't know that Waggle controls are necessarily better than Bongo controls. And ultimately, the controls are the reason that nobody's really played this game or right. that it doesn't get talked about. I would never recommend that goofy controls are better for a platformer than just standard controls. However, that doesn't make this a bad game. It's worth checking out. Yeah, that's one. I did. You walked into the studio. I was like, "What is that?" Yeah, that's one that uh, I definitely haven't played or tried out. But it sounds intriguing. Yes. Where you can actually use the sounds because drums. Oh, got it. See what you did there. I, yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> uh, so these are the the platform games that a lot of people have overlooked. Now, if we extended the list just a little bit, what are some of the games that you're thinking of? I would say Blue's Journey um, for the Neo, Neo Geo. Geo. Yeah. Everybody knows the Neo Geo for fighting games and Metal Slug. Blue's Journey is an actual arcade-based side-scrolling platformer. Yep. Goofy power-ups, crazy art style, super fun. Yep. How about you? Nintendo Switch, I think uh, Donkey Kong Country Freeze. Now, it Tropical is a new... Freeze. What's that? Tropical, Tropical Freeze. Freeze, you're right. Yes. Uh, so that was one that... Uh, was ported over to the Switch, and it did get a little bit of attention, but I don't think it gets enough attention. Everyone no. assumes it's so hard, don't want to play it, and it didn't get a lot of love on the Nintendo Wii U anyways. Right, because so. nobody bought that thing. Yeah, one more for you. Um, 
I would probably say Sneaky Snakes, maybe, for the Game Boy. Oh. Um, so if you're familiar with Snake, Rattle, and Roll on the NES, it's kind of an isometric game. Sneaky Snakes is sort of the offshoot to that, where it's a 2D side-scroller. You're controlling snakes through these um, levels, and then you've got the added twist of you've got to eat enough so your snake can get through the exit at the end of the level. Yeah, It's a cool game. It's got great music, too. Awesome. The last one I'd pick is on the NES, of course, mm -hmm. and that's Tom and Jerry. That's a game that's very Chippendales-esque. There's some annoying pieces and weird Rescue pieces Rangers, of Rescue Rangers, Chippendales. Yeah, not those Chippendales. <laughs> Although I'd play that game. No, just... Insert Chris Farley clip here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's a game that gets overlooked. Yeah. Again, Tom and Jerry during that time was just kind of dead. You know, your early 90s, it's just something that really isn't on, uh, yeah. on anybody's minds. And so when you release... A game with that license and just people overlook it but it's worth checking out and yeah. it's super cheap as well and that one's got a super nintendo counterpart that i think is just as good too so. yeah awesome yeah. well there you have it there are some platform games that you overlooked maybe we missed some i'm sure we missed some a few on many many systems why don't you shoot them down in the comments below that would be very helpful for us and maybe ones that we are unaware of that we need to pick up as well. Yeah, we're looking for some new games to play, everybody. Yeah. Well, you can check us out on all the socials. There'll be links on uh, the screen, I'm sure, and down below. Somewhere. And until then, um, we'll talk to you next time. See ya.